Why would anyone choose Linux? Is it the secret society of tech wizards? The allure of being a rebel or maybe you just simply hate Windows? Let me explain what I think that is the reason why people are ditching Windows. I feel like this question can be answered like a thousand times on YouTube, on whatever social media, but people will just keep asking it again and again, why would I choose Linux? So whenever something is like cool and you know, you, you can see other people switching to Linux and other uh, content creators are uh, making headlines how everyone is switching to Linux. But what, what does that mean? Why would you switch to Linux? Should you switch to Linux? I mean, if everyone is switching, why would you not be a part of everyone, you know, a part of the pact? You know, maybe follow the herd, right? But don't, don't do that. Choose your own reasons and make it the right ones. Because Linux and free software in general is about freedom, freedom of choice basically. Uh, there are like many hundreds of Linux distributions and often, uh, you know, content creators and users uh, would say that uh, having all those choices like a bad thing and, you know, new users cannot get on board uh, because they don't know which one to pick. Uh, but this is not actually a problem. When you have a friend and you want to get him or her on board, uh, just give them something easy to use that will work uh, out of the box if that's a normal user that just wants the operating system to get out of their way. If your friend is some kind of a tinkerer and likes to work under the hood, uh, please give them Arch Linux. Uh, and I'm not even joking. Uh, it is up to you to decide uh, what you are going to recommend to your friend. You know them much better than I do. Of course, I don't know your friends. But the, the thing is, like, uh, so, some Linux distributions are for gaming. Some are completely minimal and use very, very little resources and can work on an ancient computer. Uh, some Linux um, distributions are very heavy and eye candy. You got all these desktop environments completely. You, you remember the question when people asked you, uh, what does Linux look like? Yes, that's the question, right? We have GNOME, we have KDE, we, we have XFTS, we have Hyperland as a tiling eye candy uh, window manager. We have window maker you know you remember window maker that was my first window manager uh, one of my favorites from back in the day uh there is plenty 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 of choice and you can do all kinds of customization so this is about choice right but not just the choice of how your linux looks like how your computer looks like how your operating system looks like it's how it works under the hood there is system D in its process. If you are new to this channel or new to Linux, you don't really have to know what this is. Uh, but if you want to dig a little bit deep, deeper, so the way Linux uh, and basically any operating system works, uh, when it starts booting up, there is always something that handles um, booting up all the demons and services and processes, right? On Linux, we call it just an init daemon. Uh, right now, System D is one of the most popular ones uh, that has kind of uh, taken over all of the GNU Linux uh, world. Uh, but before that, there was a Sysv init which came all the way all the way back from uh, the age of uh, Unix, right? Uh, there is also like OpenRTS and others, right? The, these are the kind kind of um, core systems on your operating system that will take care of uh, booting up everything to a fully functional state. This is something that you are able to pick from when you're picking your 
next distribution of GNU Linux uh, and you are probably going to distro hop a lot if you switch to Linux uh, in any capacity, right? Linux isn't just a free alternative, it's a fortress. It's like having your own castle with a moat and a drawbridge and a dragon guarding your data. No sneaky telemetry and no restarts in the middle of your meetings. Got a dusty old laptop lying around? Linux doesn't really care. You can put it on any hardware. I mean, if you will want to have all the eye candy, right, and all the latest and greatest software, right, you are going to need some of the resources. But usually, if you have something like 2 gigs of RAM, uh, you're pretty much good to go. But here's the kicker. Linux is not just switching the operating system. It's joining the community. It's basically like having your own technical support, but without the hold music, right? You know what I mean? Uh, you can go online to a lot of forums, maybe Reddit, uh, YouTube, uh, Matrix chats. Uh, there are all kinds of places where you will always find someone willing to give you a hand and help you get on board. It, it's just the way the whole free software movement functions. And speaking of free software, uh, I'm not just saying about it being free as in gratis. I am talking about free as in freedom. You can always not just not pay for it, although you should pay for it. If you check out one of my older videos uh, in order for all of the free software community to grow and become more of the quality, if you can spare a coin, I would urge you to do that. If you can't, also very good. Give a hand to someone who needs it, learn something, pay it forward, pay, pay your knowledge forward. There, there is always someone who is waiting to be grateful for your assistance, right? But speaking of free software as in freedom, if you are curious, you can always peek under the hood and check out the source code if that's your thing, right? You don't have to really do that. But if you're interested in how things are assembled, uh, maybe you're uh, trying to become a programmer, maybe you are going to be the next one who is going to contribute a lot to the whole free software community. You never know. You never know. So then why use Linux, right? I mean, the community, the security, the speed, the freedom, uh, no telemetry. But don't take my word for it. Download Zorin, Mint, Ubuntu maybe, if you are a beginner, or if you like to tinker, go with um, Endeavor OS maybe. That's a really, really popular choice now nowadays and has all of the latest packages. I mean, why not just give them all of a spin, right? All of them are completely free and you might just end up wondering why haven't you done this sooner? Are you already a Linux user? I bet a lot of you who are watching this are. What is your favorite part about Linux and the Linux community and free software maybe in general? I'm going to see you in the next video.